Hi everyone, welcome back to another Math 9 video. Today we're looking at 7.3, which is deductive reasoning. Last day we did inductive reasoning. And just to start off with, I've drawn a quick diagram to sort of draw a comparison between the two. I think that that's helpful. With inductive reasoning, you can think of it this way. We start with smaller examples, and from that we draw general conclusions. And with deductive reasoning, we start off with the more general um, statements, and then from that we can draw or work our way towards specific examples, which is what I'm visually trying to show in those diagrams. So, let's read through some of these things before we um, slide into some examples. Deductive reasoning is drawing conclusions from facts that are accepted as being true. We start with a general statement and we deduce something specific from it. This is like a top-down approach, which is the opposite of inductive reasoning, which is what is demonstrated in these diagrams. Here are some steps for deductive reasoning. We can begin with an accepted fact, continue with the step-by-step -step statement using logical reasoning, and then for the last one, ensure each statement is in sequential order and leads to a clear solution. So let's dive into a couple of examples so you can clearly see what we're talking about. Okay, so for the first one, if A equals B and B equals C, then what can we deduce from this? If they both are equal to this B, then A must be equal to C. So we're basically looking for similarities. And so based on the statements made, we can deduce that A must be equal to C since they both equal B. Okay, here's another statement. Um, since all humans are mortal, and I am human, then I am mortal. So I think you're starting to see a pattern. In the last one, we used equations to help you to understand using variables and equations. And then the rest are going to be sentences so that you can start to understand the concept and then we can later on use that and apply it. Number three, all dolphins are mammals. All mammals have kidneys. So basically what can we say based on that? If all dolphins are mammals and all mammals have kidneys, then all dolphins have kidneys. So it may appear as if we're stating the obvious in some way, but this is a strategy or a tool that we can use to make an argument or to back up what we're saying. Number four, elephants have cells in their bodies and all cells have DNA. So, Elephants have DNA. So I think you're starting to pick up on what we're doing here and how we're using this to back up our statements. Okay, so then shifting gears a little bit, determine whether the statement is true or false. And if it's false, show a counter example. Number A, or part A, every even number divisible by 6 is divisible by 3. So let's think of numbers that are divisible by 6, and let's think our way through this. So for example, uh, maybe we would think every even number, sorry, that's divisible by 6. So there's 6, we could think of like 12, 18, 24. And we could keep going, but these are all numbers that are divisible by 6. So let's check. Does that divide by 3? Yes, it is. Divisible by 3? Yes, yes, yes. So 
I can say that this is true. Okay, the next one. Um, a number greater than 12 is divisible by 12 if it is divisible by both 2 and 3. A number greater than 12 is divisible by 12 if it is divisible by both 2 and 3. Okay, let's think of this. Can we... Well, I guess a good way to wrap our head around this is think of, can I think of a number bigger than 12 that is divisible by 2 and 3, but isn't divisible by 12? So I'm trying to think of some of the numbers bigger than 12 that are divisible by 2 and 3, because to me, this feels like it probably isn't true. But in order to, to counter this example, I need to come up with a specific value. So a number that I'm thinking of is uh, 18, for example. So I'm going to say false. And my counter example, I would say since 18 is divisible by 2, I would get 9. And 18 is divisible by 3, I would get 6. But it isn't divisible by 12. So 18 can't go into 12. So I would say this for sure is false. And here are my work or my examples to back up what I'm saying. Okay, next one. All students at Lord Bing are British Columbians. All British Columbians are Canadian. What can we deduce from this? Okay. So, if all students at Bing are British Columbians and all British Columbians are Canadian, we could say all students at Bing are Canadian. So you get the idea of how we would use deductive reasoning in order to back up our statements or provide proof. Okay, so that's all of your work for this section. Um, here are the suggested questions for you to work on. And that's the end of this video.